something quite holy. Oh, hey! Oh, what is it? Mammut. Mammut. Yeah, it's Mammut. made from uh, recycled climbing rope. I got the same mammut going on. Yeah. We need to go to that shop. Wo ist mein Mammut? Kriegst du ein? Ich hab kein Mammut. Okay, this is Jacob. Hello, sir. Jacob's dropping us off. Uh, there's the border. And we're gonna head. To oh, it's windy. This audio is gonna be terrible. So let's say goodbye to our ride, Jacob. Ciao. See you in Switzerland. See you in Switzerland. Hi everyone, Nemo here. Welcome to Austria. And we're gonna walk that way over to the border with Liechtenstein. And we're gonna walk all the way through Liechtenstein to Switzerland, which is gonna be exciting. I'm gonna answer your questions while we do it. So, los geht's. <laughs> So just gone through the border, you can see it there behind me, and um, there's some cyclists coming towards me, but there was no one at the border. Morgen. And now, we're in Liechtenstein. Super. Right now, that hill is Liechtenstein, that mountain is Switzerland, and that mountain over there is Austria. So to the questions, the uh -huh. first question being, why am I walking across Liechtenstein? And why have I just taken a wrong turn? Well. The answer to the second question is easier because I didn't look at the map properly. The answer to the first question is, why not? When you're in Europe, you can just easily walk between countries. The borders are friendly, open, there was no one there. So I thought it'd be a fun thing. It only takes 45 minutes to walk from Austria to Switzerland via Liechtenstein along this road. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk all this way. I'm going to keep answering your questions. It's going to be a good time. Just stepping off the path here, off the road. And this big tractor on its way. We're just going to step off and go down. Go down there. What do I think is going to happen to my letters that I sent to the bishops of the First Presidency? Well, if you don't know, I sent a letter informing the First Presidency bishops and state presidents, you know, because they live in wards, informing them that they should probably in at disciplinary proceedings, given that if this were any other member of the church, they would face church discipline. And they have a public prominent position within the church. You know, they're well known. So they bring the church into disrepute when they do nonsense like cost the church $5 million. So what do I think will happen? Mm, not a lot, probably. But you never know. And the point is, that's what you're meant to do. You're meant to let people's ecclesiastical leaders know when they're doing something wrong that is hurting others so that that behavior can stop. And if they choose to put themselves above that kind of system, well, there's not a lot I can do about that, I suppose. What do I think of Elder Ruckdorf's demotion? Uh, it's fairly unprecedented for a man who was in good health. If you look back through the history of first presidencies, they were often released if they're in bad health or they just waited to die. So it's a bit strange. I think it's very much connected to his attitudes uh, that aren't in line with the more authoritarian attitudes of Nelson, Oakes. I think Eyring's there for sort of stability or for continuity because he knows about how they were hiding all the money for all those years. He's been doing it a while, you know? So I think it's important that he stayed on the presidency, but I think Uchtdorf could be let go. And he also dared to say in conference that church leaders have made mistakes and that doesn't wash in the Russell M. Nelson presidency, you know? That just doesn't work. So uh, yeah, that's what I think. I think uh, he was let go because his values didn't align with the values of the First Presidency and he wasn't needed because others knew where the cash was too. Next question was, how do you remain in a relationship with believing family and members? How do you keep interacting with them once you're outside the church? I think it's really important how you tell them you're outside the church. That's the, the first kind of critical thing is how have you told them? So a great way to have relationships with them and to have that conversation can be to say, what would you like to know? When they, if they ask why have you left the church. Find out what they want to know. Find out if they want to know at all. Do they want to know why you left the church? Because if they don't, don't tell them. But if they do, then they asked you to. And that's not your fault or problem. If they asked you to tell them. So let them run that conversation from that sense and then they're gonna feel less threatened and you can have good conversations with them. That'd be my thoughts. Isn't this scenery gorgeous? Look at that. How good is salted licorice? Bad, just really bad. 
My thoughts on Joseph Smith in the World Peace Dome. Well, I guess the question I want you to talk about in the comments is, what did he do for world peace? And if it just represents the broader Mormon church, what did they do for world peace? As for a giant golden idol of Joseph Smith, well, it's a different story. It's quite tricky for the church to kind of not acknowledge it and be rude, but equally, it's just kind of not our thing, except for the giant golden idols we have on the top of most of our temples. Those are fine. Exmo or church history, books, recommendations, etc. Um, I don't have any specific sort of ex-Mormon books or anything. I guess you could look at Tara Westover's book, Educated, as an ex-Mormon book, but she kind of states explicitly that it's not really about Mormonism, so it's kind of more just about her and her family and about education. Moroni and the Swastika is a great book. I'm reading through that one currently. Uh, Rough Stone Rolling's good. You know, the classics. B.H. Roberts' Studies of the Book of Mormon, Early Mormonism and the Magic Worldview, uh, No Man Knows My History, Hugh Nibley's little pamphlet, No Man, That's Not History, is a really interesting counterpoint to read. In terms of series, TV series, Under the Banner of Heaven was quite good. There was some license taken with things, obviously, but you know, it's creative, TV. I found the Warren Jeffs documentary on Netflix interesting, as was the Mark Hoffman documentary. Yeah, I think that's some good recommendations that should keep you busy for a while. Will I be excommunicated for sending those letters? Well, I haven't been excommunicated for anything else I've done, so probably not. I'm a little bit untouchable, which is a nice feeling, until it all comes crashing down, obviously. But I would struggle to see what they would excommunicate me for, you know? That's the procedure, like I said. You contact the priesthood leaders of those who have done things that are harming members of the church so that that harm can stop. And I think it's pretty harmful to members to not tell them about the kind of money you have and to instead continue to insist that they must pay you money under threat of burning at the second coming. I don't think that's great. Okay, some stuff that's weird or red flaggy but not really getting spoken about in the USA or people in the USA may not know about, I suppose that was the question. The fact that Australia has mandated safeguarding procedures for children and background checks that the rest of the world doesn't seem to have. The fact that the church will only enact those when legally compelled, and the fact that here in the UK, they're not background checking people. And if you look at the work of 21st century saints and the way that the church is talking to government inquiries about abuse in the church, well, it's just worth looking at, that's all I'll say. So go check out the videos we've done about that. One of my favorite books, my favorite books, I really like The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. I think it's a fascinating insight into why we all think we're right and how we can better get along with each other. And boy, it's getting noisy now because we're getting close to the end. We're just about to pop out on this road here. Here we go. So here, as I'm leaving Liechtenstein behind me and crossing over the bridge into Switzerland again, I guess the final question you could ask me is, What's next, Nemo? What's next for you? Well, if you want to find that out, I suppose you better subscribe, haven't you?